Good afternoon, everyone. I apologize for this late start. The town of Hinton respectfully acknowledges that it is located on Treaty 6 territory and Métis Nation region number four. These are the traditional territories and ancestral lands of the indigenous peoples, including the Plains Cree First Nations, um, Asinawuchi, Winnewick, Rocky Mountain First Nations, Stony, Susina, Nakota, Dene Sulin, Soto, Mountain Metis, Me Chief, and many other communities that continue to enrich the land on which the town of Hinton was established. With that, I would like to call the regular meeting of council to order at 1602 or um, 12 minutes after, after four. So council, we're gonna move into the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Council? I would, uh, would like to make an amendment to the uh, to the agenda and add an item to uh, close session and uh, it would be CAO selection process. Please. Good, thank you. Uh, administration, any additions or deletions to the agenda? Madam Chair, through you to all of council, just a note that item 6.1, the 2011 International Solid Waste Truck, uh, this is motion 2627. Uh, we have circulated a revised agenda packet <clears throat> item. It does not change the agenda, but uh, just to let council know. Thank you, sir. So we have a uh, an amended um, agenda. I will accept a motion to accept the agenda. And we have a motion from Councillor LaBerge. Thank you. Move to accept the agenda as amended. Any debate, questions, Council? So I'm not seeing them, so it's, we're good. Okay, so we're good. Um, seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? Eric? Eric? Okay. So council, that brings us to council's minutes for adoption. Uh, council, any questions or concerns on our previous minutes? And seeing none, I will um, entertain a motion. I am sorry, Madam Chair, we do have uh, Councillor Taylor. Okay. I was just going to move that we adopt the uh, June 21st uh, regular meeting and the June 28th special and June 28th uh, Committee of the Whole minutes. Uh, okay, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Any debate or question? Council. And seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? And that's carried. That brings us to our um, minute with council. Jen, do we have people um, waiting to speak to council? Just have one. Okay, so I just have a, you certainly sit down right there and welcome. So um, this is an opportunity for people in the community to share their thoughts and concerns. Um, this is not an open dialogue with council, so no questions should be directed to council. Um, we ask for um, people to be respectful. If you do need assistance, we will direct you to administration to, to help you out. Okay, so if I could get your name, please. It's Ellen Lebrecht. Ellen Lebrecht. Thank you very much. Okay, go ahead, Ellen. Um, I have real concerns with the hours of availability and appointment schedules for the Freedom Express bus. Um, I find it very hard to make an appointment. I find we need to have more hours or more time or days allocated to the Freedom bus. 
because I find our disability in our community are not being able to access medical appointments that are very important. Um, when you have three days a week, which are the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for the bus to run, you also have it allocated to, to the adult day program, which is wonderful. I take no concern with that. But when you're competing to try and make an appointment for a medical appointment and you're denied because they don't have enough time to book when the adult program also runs Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, you have no time to make a medical appointment. My dad was denied an appointment because there wasn't enough room on the schedule, which I found out to be untrue. Um, I find it really hard that our seniors and our disability disabled people in town are not, there's not enough access for them to have quality of life. When you can't get to appointments, people are sitting at home, not being well, because we can't access our bus. Other things are taking up space. And I know you can't get an appointment every time you want one. I understand that. But when there's not enough allotted time for appointments or other things other than a day program, which I think is great, again, it's just really hard when you, you guys want people to use this bus. We want it in our community. We need it. And you can get it. And you have people sitting out there in our community that we don't know if they're getting the help they need because they can't access an appointment. So your ridership is down. Maybe that's why, because we can't access what we need because it's not there. I feel if we could find some way to have a, the Monday Fridays maybe for appointments and other things other than the day program. I know they're busy trying to schedule people in, but I find it really hard when you call to make an appointment and you don't get a call back or you get told we can get them there, but we can't guarantee we can get them back. Well, I'm sorry, my dad's 85. He doesn't have the physical capabilities for me to get him in a vehicle. I tried that today. It didn't work. He missed his appointment. It's really hard when you have a heart patient that can't get medical help and it's not always accessible at the hospital even though he's in a care center we have people in our community that live at home that they can't get to a doctor's appointment because appointments are hard to get and then to try and schedule in a bus and it's busy and then you can't even get enough days to get the bus and I feel our community is falling short and people's lives are at stake. And we need help. I would pay for the bus trip wholeheartedly, but not everybody else has that access to that either. And I know it's a financial deficit for our town, but there's got to be grant funding or some way to make it work better. has reached out to you yes, and, and has asked you to make that phone call to him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. so, and I'm hoping you do. I will. Okay. Yeah. Um, I appreciate your time. I never thought I'd be at a council meeting to this. But I feel like people aren't saying because they feel exhausted that they have tried and they give up. And I think that's a big reason why our ridership is not happening because it's, it's so frustrating and almost futile that you just can't seem to access what is needed because it's just not there. And I feel it should be. Well, tomorrow, I certainly hope you reach out to our um, interim CAO. And thank you so much for stepping up and um, bringing this to our attention. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> so
So Janet was just the one. Yes, it was. Thanks. Um, I see Magoon. Uh, we have the TV on in the corner there, and Councillor Magoon has his hand. Councillor Magoon. Uh, yeah, thanks. I guess uh, I just had a, a question for Ellen, really just a request. Uh, first of all, Ellen, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that you were having difficulties with the with the service and, and getting appointments for your dad. Um, you know, what it sounded like was maybe you were talking to some other people who were having similar experiences. If, if you were, could you please encourage them to reach out to council so that we could hear uh, if folks are having difficulties with the service? Uh, that would be really helpful to us. I, I know there's um, individuals at the care center that work there that might be because I don't want to be but they are also having some kind of Sorry, Madam Chair, could you ask uh, um, Ms. Silbrecht to come back to the microphone? The uh, councillors who are joining via Zoom can't hear. Councillor Magoon, um, I feel there are other people in the community, yes, that don't feel comfortable coming forward because of their job. Um, there are care facilities in our town that are also having issues trying to book things for their care facilities. And it's really a shame that they feel they can't come forward because it's conflict with their workplace to be in meetings like this with the town. So that's really hard. And I don't want to put them in the hot seat, but I feel I'm not the only person in this community that has disabled people that find it hard to access things in our town. And our bus is, it's a vital thing for them to get to places and get to appointments. And I know any of us that have a loved one that have had a health issue or and I know COVID's been hard and appointments are few and far between, but when you get an appointment, you really need to keep that appointment. Mm -hmm. And that bus is a huge, huge thing for us. And I find it's just not there. We don't have enough time limit for people to be able to use it properly. Uh, Councillor McGoon. No, I was just waving. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Alan, thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Chair, I believe that uh, Councillor Haas had a question. Sorry if I could just ask uh, Ms. Lebrecht, maybe just. Councillor Haas. Yeah, this message or uh, question is for administration. Administration, I understand that uh, I think if I recall in 2023 budget, deliberations, this is something that's going to come back to us and look look at the future of Freedom Express and, and uh, address if there's any issues with it. I guess my question to administration is, are we going to be, if that's the case, are we going to be doing some, I don't know if it's surveys, whatever word you want to call it, with our service providers out in the community, community members as well, to get feedback on if the service is working, if it's not working, um, you know, because then it would give people an opportunity that, you know, uh, Ellen was speaking to that maybe aren't comfortable coming this way, but can express some of their views in other ways as well. Is that something that's going to be planned for 2023 when we look at transportation in our community? Madam Chair, through you to uh, Councillor Haas, to all of Council. Um, yes, in the 2022 mm -hmm. budget, this was a, a business case that was deferred to 2023. Uh, it was seeking to uh, restore a portion of the Freedom Express service here in the town of Hinton. And uh, I, I will certainly be talking to administrative staff as we're preparing this budget on how we can engage with and discuss this with the service providers and make sure that the uh, service is meeting the expectations and the needs of the community. 
Okay, and if I have, Madam Chair, if I have a follow-up question? Certainly, sir. Yeah, I'm just wondering, and it's just a question for administration to ponder, but is there a possibility for appointments that priority appointments such as medical appointments uh, supersede other appointments? So, I mean, I don't want to take away people from going to the, whether other programs in the community. However, as, as Ellen has mentioned, medical appointments are extremely difficult to get and getting to them. Is it possible that that might be instated potentially in the, in, the, in the near future until we can see if we need to increase those services, but, and so that these individuals can get to their appointments? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, through you to uh, Councillor Haas to uh, all of Council, uh, this would certainly be one of the items I'll discuss with the administration regarding the Freedom Express program. I, I, I'm unable to respond uh, today to that question. And I appreciate that. I, I realize it's a you know spur of the moment question, but just something maybe to consider possibly, you know, I mean, I don't want to take away from adult day, but adult day is, is socializing, which is great and they need it. But medical appointments too are, are, are I think, get, take precedent over that. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. Do any other councillors wish to speak? Okay. Thank you, Ellen, very much. Thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. So uh, one thing I have to address right now, anybody who's watching this meeting, you might think that uh, the three of us are pretty lonely up here and we may not have quorum. We do have quorum. We have um, three councillors who are attending this meeting via Zoom. Our um, dear mayor is not able to be with us tonight, um, but I'm sure he's wishing us well. So we will continue. Jen, do we have any uh, delegations tonight? No, we don't. No delegations? We're going to move into our um, action items right now. Our first action item is on page 27. And uh, this action item is the 2011 International Solid Waste Truck. And I'll put this over to administration. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to uh, all of council. I, I will turn this matter over to Mr. Martineau. Uh, John is our public works supervisor. This is a follow-up to a discussion we had at the Committee of the Whole last uh, Tuesday. Thank you, ICAO. Through you to Madam Chair and Council. Uh, I'm just bringing this item back from our Committee of the Whole meeting last week, um, just to reiterate the uh, opportunity that the administration has identified to make a net zero exchange for um, an attachment for our commercial front load truck that was not serving us well and um, to acquire uh, another truck which was a 2011 rental uh, solid waste truck uh, for a straight trade um, so the recommended action was that council approve the purchase of the rental unit, the 2011 international solid waste truck using funds from the sale of the Corrado cat. Right. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I do have a question. The, the trade or the sale of that arm or that can, is that a, um, that's a hundred percent. That's right. It would be a net zero exchange okay. straight trade. Okay. So council, we do have a, um, Action item and Councillor Magoon. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move that Council approves the purchase of the rental unit, the 2011 International Solid Waste Truck, using funds from the sale of the 2020 Corrado can. Thank you, sir. We do have a motion on the floor. Is there any question or debate from Council? Councillor Haas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll be in favor of this. Um, I appreciate uh, administration, uh, I guess the unique way of dealing with this issue, um, you know, and, and uh, wasn't an issue that we 
new from the beginning, but it uh, came about. And this was a, a great opportunity to purchase this truck was still getting rid of the Curry Auto Can and uh, with, with limited costs. So appreciate that. Thank you. So Jen, could we have the uh, motion put up? CEO. Uh, Madam, sorry. Sure. Madam Chair, if I could, um, we continue to have a certain degree of difficulty with our techn technological support, and we are unable to put the motions up on the screen at this time. One of the items that uh, has been suggested is uh, the possibility of a five to 10 minute recess where we could reboot our system in the hopes that that would get our overhead going again. Um, in the case of this first item, the, uh, the motion is fairly simple. However, the next item has a, a quite a bit more complicated and a longer motion. So I'll, I'll simply leave that and seek council's direction on the matter. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, Councilor McGowan. So if you can hear me, my question is your motion, was that um, our option number one? It was the recommended action or the recommended uh, direction on page. Well, the first page of the amended uh, information we were given, page one of three, the recommended action. Okay, so you know what I'll do because um, I don't want to call a break knowing that we have a motion on the floor. So I will read this and then we will call the question. Um, and I will call the question that council approves the purchase of the rental unit, the 2011 International Solid Waste Truck using funds from the sale of the 2020 Corato CAM. All those in favor? And that's carried. And now we're gonna call for a 10 minute recess. Okay, thank you. What do we do? Do we just hang on here or not? Or do you want us to shut down and uh, re, re get on? Thank you. I would like to reconvene this meeting at 4.42. Our next action item is 6.2, found on page 30 of our agenda. And that is the 2022 public auction reserve bid for tax arrears properties. Administration. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just going to check to our uh, councillors participating via Zoom. Can you hear us? Okay, that's good. Um, on page 30 of uh, Council's agenda package, this is to set the 2022 public auction reserve bids for tax arrear properties here in the town of Hinton. Uh, the recommendation, recommended action reads as follows, that Council approve the reserve bids as shown attachment one for tax arrears on properties 4, 21, 41, 42, 70, 80, 89, 271, and 328, all located at 133 Jarvis Street, as well as 2, 9A, 13A, 27, 73, and 114. And those properties are at 145 East River Road. And 106B Cheviot Drive, as well as to set the public auction date for September 23rd, 2022 at 1 p.m. That council approves the following sale conditions for the tax arrears properties that may be sold at the public auction. Sub A, that a deposit of 10% of the purchase price be paid at the time of purchase. And sub B, that the balance of the purchase price be paid by September 30th, 2022 at 4 p.m. Bit of background in this matter, there are 16 properties on the tax action list, auction list this year. And as a shown in attachment one, 
all of these properties are over three years delinquent or in arrears on their taxes and requisitions owed the uh, town of Hinton. Per the Municipal Government Act, uh, it is a requirement that council set a market value and reserve bid for each property that's to be offered for sale at this public auction, as well as to set the date. The last public auction took place in February of this year, February 25th, 2022, with one property totaling $7,000. Uh, as well, at that time, the town followed the required processes outlined in the MGA. All affected property owners regarding these 16 properties have been advised on numerous occasions that their taxes are in arrears. Statements are sent to every outstanding account in January, May, July, August, and November of each year. Market value reserve bids for these affected properties were established by McCartney Radnick Appraisals Incorporated and Powers and Associates. Any sale proceeds realized from the auction are used to firstly satisfy tax arrears and costs occurred by the town of Hinton. Historically, most property owners pay their taxes, pay their tax arrears and costs prior to actually going to auction. Just uh, at the bottom of page 31, I'll draw, draw, draw council's attention to the following statement. If a property is not sold at auction, the town may choose to take title. If the decision to take title is made, the town would become liable for that property. With that, uh, Madam Chair, and to the uh, members of council here uh, this afternoon, uh, council's recommend, recommended action has been read into the record and appears on page 30. And the author and myself are available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council. And we have. Um, not Taylor. Yes. Councillor Taylor. You forgot my name. Just kidding. Um, my question is, uh, property 7133 Jarvis Street, it appears in this list and it appears on the next list, um, waiver of outstanding property taxes. And that's because it appears on the next action item because it has no value and attracts uh, squatters and it's been abandoned for several years. So why are we trying to sell that property? Madam Chair, through you to Councillor Taylor, to all of Council. The uh, unit 70 at 133 Jarvis Street in attachment one is shown with an estimated market value of $2,000. And this is part of the process. It is greater than three years in arrears. And so this is being brought forward to be form part of the uh, anticipate auction this September. Uh, if council wishes, there, and I'm not wishing to move ahead to the next agenda item, but uh, the uh, property owners of the trailer park did add unit 70 to their request of, of a tax waiver. And so there's a couple of options that I can share with council how administration would recommend proceeding with this matter at this time. Thank you. Council, any more discussion on this? Do you have an idea of where you would like to go? Councillor Ostashek. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do have a uh, question regarding the uh, item at the bottom of page 31 in risk and liability that uh, interim CEO Hanlon referred to. Uh, if property is not sold at auction, the town may choose to take title. If the decision to take title is made, the town would become liable for the property. In the event that the property doesn't sell at auction and the town does not wish to take title, then what happens? Thank you, sir, through you to all of council. Um, if council chooses to not uh, essentially through the auction process claim any of the properties that may become available as shown in attachment, excuse me, in attachment one, um, the properties essentially stay in a state of limbo. Uh, officially with land titles, they remain the property of the registered landowner, even if they may be abandoned or derelict. And uh, they remain a ongoing liability for the park owners in the case of uh, trailer placement. Okay, thank you.
Council, I would need some direction on how, and Councillor Ostashik. Thank you, Mayor, Madam Chair. I do have an additional question. Interim CEO Hanlon indicated that um, there's an option regarding that one property that uh, Councillor Taylor referred to. I'm a little bit confused about that too. So does that option fall under this action item or does that option fall under the next action item? Can't hear. Excuse me. I'm I'm sorry, sir. Um, this item could remain on attachment one, and could uh, be approved by council here today, and that would then schedule it for the September twenty third date. And then when we come to the next agenda item, an option of council would be to defer a decision on lot 70, 133 Jarvis Street until after that auction in September and the possibility that somebody may choose to take it at the time of auction. Perfect, that brings uh, some additional clarity. I have better understanding now. Thank you. Uh, with that, Ms. Ms. Uh, Madam Chair, can I make a motion? Certainly, sir. Thank you. I'd like to move the council approve the reserve bids as shown on attachment one for tax arrears properties 421, 41, 42, 70, 80, 89, 271, and 328, 133 Jarvis Street, 29A, 13A, 27, 73, and 114, 145 East River Road, and 106B Cheviot Drive and set the public auction date for September 23rd, 2022 at one o'clock and that council approves the following sale conditions for the tax arrears properties that may be sold at the public auction. A, that a deposit of 10% of the purchase price be paid at the time of purchase, and B, that the balance of the purchase price be paid by September 30th, 2022 at four o'clock p.m. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sir, would you like to speak to this? Uh, no, I think it's pretty clear and uh, interim CAO Hanlon did a good job explaining it. Thank you. Councillor LaBerge. Um, this is a question, I guess, for administration, and it, and it, re it relates to that Unit 70. Um, I've actually had the opportunity to have a look at the picture at some of these, and, and, and I think one of the reasons we might want to have a look at allowing those properties to be demolished is because they, um, um, they're a risk. They're a risk to people in them, on them, around them. Doesn't Unit 70 uh, have some of those issues uh, that the other properties do? Uh, sir, yes, yes, it does. Uh, Unit 70, however, does need to, under the Municipal Government Act, proceed through the auction process as part of uh, our, our diligence in moving forward. Thank you, sir. So um, any other councillors would like to speak to this motion? Uh, Councillor McGowan. And I, I apologize because the question has been touched on. I just, I really need to know for sure. So my understanding was always that, uh, you know, uh, by will of council, uh, outstanding uh, tax, tax arrears could be waived. Um, and particularly I'm addressing unit 70 because I, I would like to see it um, go through a process essentially where it can be demolished uh, and that that risk can be removed from the community as soon as possible. Um, so that was again, sorry, my understanding was that could happen by will of council prior to going through the auction process. Is that is that not true? Am I misunderstanding something? Could I get some clarity there, please? Because that'll impact how I vote on this. Thank you, sir. CAO. Madam, I'm gonna actually, just for confirmation, I'm gonna ask Shelby to just speak to this because I believe it can, but I'm gonna ask Ms. Duncan to speak. Through Madam Chair and through Council, it can be waived as long as council gives us the di just the direction to waive the outstanding arrears 
um, and then it will fall off the list of the auction. Thank you. Councillor McGowan, does that satisfy your question? Go ahead, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Again, I just, so just speaking to the motion that's that's on the table, um, it's unfortunate that we're not dealing with the understanding now how things are. It's unfortunate that we're not dealing with the uh, subsequent action item, the next one, uh, requesting you know whether or not council supports the waiving of the property taxes for 36, 70, and 21, um, because I think that would certainly impact how I vote on this one. For myself, I've, for the interests of, of moving this forward and dealing with these these other these specifically 36 70 and 21 these have been long-standing issues um i'm fine with the other uh, properties going to auction i would rather see 36 70 and 21 uh get waived so that we can simply get moving through those as quickly as possible um as it stands right now i'm not likely to support the um the motion on the floor i if there was any appetite to amend the emotion i i'd very be very supportive um, I'll just see what my fellow councillors say. Thank you, sir. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, no, my, my understanding is that, is that after hearing everything is that it's okay for 70 for now to be in the public auction and reserve bid because it has a minor amount of value. So that's okay. And then immediately following, it's also okay for us to then immediately, uh, waive it and uh and and waive it as well so both things are okay we can do both that, that's what i understand councillor mcgoon is a, a response to councillor taylor uh, it's a question ma'am just a clarification to administration uh if that's possible administration that would be and i apologize if this is been answered, but it, I'm having a little bit of a hard time wrapping my head around this one. Is is that accurate? Can we then approve and then waive the outstanding property taxes following procedurally? Madam Chair, through you to uh, Councillor Magoon, to all of Council, that is correct, sir. Um, if we were to approve attachment one with a nominal value of $2,000, and if in a subsequent motion of Council, the outstanding taxes on this were waived, then it would be removed from the auction for September. Okay, no, I thank you very much. I apologize. Yeah, I, yeah obviously that was my misunderstanding. So I, I apologize to both council and administration for that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Ostashek. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I don't like to muddy the waters and move or speak about upcoming action items, but I did have a, a question if, uh, uh, if administration would entertain it. I'm just, I'm wondering why number 36, 133 Jarvis Street isn't uh, on the uh, uh, the reserve bid roll. Madam Chair, uh, through you to all the council, I believe that this went through the uh, auction process in an earlier year and was not sold. And so it simply is coming back at the request of the property owner, the trailer park property owner, asking uh, for consideration of the waiver of the outstanding taxes. And I can speak more to that with the next agenda item. Okay, I'm good for now then. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So council, we do have a motion on the floor. Is there any more debate or questions? So, Jen, this is quite a lengthy motion. Is it necessary for me to, um, after I call the question, to read it off? If nothing's changed from the original motion that Councillor Stashek put forward, you, you may proceed with voting on it. Okay, good. Okay, Council, we do have a motion on the floor. There doesn't appear to be any more debate or questions on this. I will um, call the question. And 
if council wishes for me to read this whole motion, I certainly will. But if not, um, could I have a vote, please? All in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. Our next um, action item is 6.3. It's found on page 35 of the agenda, and it is the waiver of outstanding property taxes. And we have three properties to take a look at. Administration. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the whole of council. This is three properties located at one within the trailer park at 133 Jarvis Street. Um, as you do see in the attached letter from uh, their legal counsel, Adam Parsons, which is page 37, dated June 23rd, 2022. And uh, he, he does apologize. He subsequently did call me to confirm the third property. So the letter originally requested lots 36 and 70. The, subsequently, they also have requested lot 21, which is a, a considerably older derelict property that does need in the administration's opinion to come down. So the owners of Hillcrest Manufactured Home Community and the Park Lane Manufactured Home Community have uh, a desire to see these three properties uh, demolished. Uh, they are in arrears with the trailer park owners for back uh, rent pad rental. They are all in arrears for taxes with the uh, town of Hinton. And uh, so unit 36, is in arrears in the amount of $1,942.52. Unit 70, which we've just discussed, is in arrears for the amount of $2,790.89. Unit 21 is in arrears in the amount of $7,548.32. Here within the town of Hinton, the manufactured home park, the owner of the land, if you will, on which all of these placements sits, they are responsible to pay their share of municipal taxi taxes and levied requisitions on the entirety of the park lands. Subsequently, the individual pad renters, sorry, Madam Chair, I'm not sure if there's a question I that do. we should. Yeah. Carry on. Okay. Um, so the uh, the subsequent pa rental pad uh, pad renters, excuse me, are responsible to pay taxes on the improvements on the properties. So the subsequent uh, trailers that they place, manufactured homes that they may place, decks they may build, sheds, etc., all lead to the improvement and the levying of taxes and requisitions on improvements within the parks. Those taxes are the responsibility of the pad renter. When the pad renters typically in these cases abandon these properties, move away, or somehow slip out of the system, um, the rent the the renters are no longer paying the taxes, and the taxes continue to accrue on the property. Um, in the case of these three properties, the park owners wish to demolish the three and make the properties available for other renters and future placements. Um, this did, uh, I think, predated my arrival or close to my arrival. Um, the town did issue a certain number, two or three, I'd have to check, demolition permits, but they were conditional. And one of the conditions being that all taxes had to be paid before they could proceed with the demolition. Uh, the property owners of the trailer parks do not believe that that should be their responsibility as they did not incur directly that, that debt with the town of Hinton. So they are here asking for the consideration of council to waive these, in which if waived, they would proceed with the demolition and then return these rental properties to, uh, to the market for other renters for their own improvements, at which time, of course, taxes would be levied and we would start to see these generating tax revenue within this park. Um, Madam Chair, the uh, motion is on page 35 and administration is available to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Councillor McGowan. 
Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to move that council approves the request from McClellan Stolfa Reed to waive taxes owed, including penalties and interest on the following three mobile home placements located in the Hillcrest manufactured home community, totaling $12,000. $281.73. Number 36133 Jarvis Street, roll number 20360 in the amount of $1,942.52. Number 70133 Jarvis Street, roll number 2070 in the amount of $2,790.89. Uh, and 21133 Jarvis Street, roll number 2020 in the amount of $7,548.32. Thank you. Sir, would you like to speak to that? Just very briefly, uh, these are three units uh, to whom the, uh, the original owners who were responsible for the taxes uh, are no longer paying said taxes. Those owners are not, uh, you know, in this case, the property owners where those, those items sit. Normally, under, you know, under normal circumstances, I might argue that, uh, you know, the, the business owner maintaining the mobile home park would perhaps be or have at least some responsibility. But in this case, uh, at least one or two of these properties, it poses what I believe to be a safety hazard for the community. Uh, and it just needs to be dealt with. Uh, and that's why I'm making this motion today. Thank you. Thank you, sir, very much. Council, we have a um, motion on the floor. Any debate, question? And Councillor Ostashek. Thank you, Madam Chair. So following up on my question from the earlier action item, I would ask administration for some additional clarity on number 36, uh, that it did indeed go to pre-auction previously. I'm assuming that the reserve bid was not met. And I'm also assuming that the town didn't take title to it, but if administration could confirm that. Madam Chair, uh, I'm going to ask Shelby to speak to that. In regards to, sorry, through council, in regards to unit 36, um, there, it's, hasn't been, um, went to the reserve auction and nobody bid on it. So it's in limbo, basically. Uh, the second part, though, the town did not take title no, to it? No, we have um, 10 years to take title if we wanted. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I do have a question. So in those 10 years, did it just keep um, the sum just kept adding up the taxes? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. So, Council, we do have a motion. Is there any further debate or questions on this? Councillor Ostashek. Uh, thank you again, Madam Chair. So I'm going to be supporting the proposed motion, um, but my support for the proposed motion comes with uh, a bit of a proviso, I guess. Uh, moving forward, we have the assurance from administration that they're going to be more diligent about making sure that they're on top of dealing with these uh, delinquent uh, delinquent uh, taxed properties. Uh, and I take them at that word and I look forward to that. But the other thing I'm looking forward to is having a discussion about how uh, mobile homes are, and mobile home parks are taxed. My understanding is other communities do it differently and that the mobile home park is taxed for the entirety of the property and all of the structures on it. And that it's the park's responsibility to collect that back from the uh, tenants who who are pad renting. I think that's definitely an option that I would want to consider and want to discuss further with council because it puts the onus on the park owners to make sure that their tenants are staying up on the on the uh, municipal taxes. And when these types of situations arise, the responsibility remains with the park owners and the town doesn't wind up having to defer taxes that are owed just for the privilege of being able to demolish a, uh, a building that's that's not habitable and, and is, is a danger. I'm supporting this today because I agree with comments that were made earlier that these properties definitely pose a risk, they pose a hazard, and they're, they're not good to have anywhere in our community. So the fact that they're going to be torn down by passing this is something that I support. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Councillor Haas. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and I too am in support of this, but I have the same uh, or appreciate Councillor Stashik's word so in regards to the future of, of this. And I, I too would love to have that conversation. And I believe there was some appetite, I think a while back administration was looking into something regards to taxation when it comes to the trailer areas there, um, because this falls on the other taxpayers of our community. So we need to be, you know, what can we do to mitigate as much as we can this happening in the future. So uh, hopefully that's something that comes to, to uh, a conversation at a later date. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas. I, uh, I too look forward to having that big conversation. So, um, Councillor Ostashek, your comments did not change that motion in any way. So, if there is, are no further questions, no more debate, I would like to call the question on this. And because there has been no change to this motion, I'm not going to read it off. So, um, we'll, uh, I'll call the question. All those in favor of this motion? And it's carried. Thank you. Council, any, uh, Councillor Taylor? Uh, yeah, um, I guess this is related to what uh, Councillor Nostashkik said. Um, the second paragraph this about this, about our management of these um, things, how can we improve that going forward? What's the go forward step to improve the management of this administration? Go ahead. Madam Chair, through you to Councillor Taylor, to all of Council, I, I would suggest that we are in fact doing that with the previous item you saw us correctly bringing uh, 14 properties to Council for minimum bids in a proposed tax auction. Uh, a couple of these historically lingered and were not properly dealt with in the past by the town of Hinton. Going forward, we will continue to do that. One of the issues, of course, to be aware of is the possibility that some of these have negligible value. Even if the market value might be $10,000, we may not be successful going to auction on seeing that sold or making a decision that we, as the town of Hinton, want to take on that liability. Um, I, I think a flip side of the discussion about the management of taxes in our in our uh, mobile home parks also needs to be focus on the willingness of this uh, of this particular property owner to work with the town to try and find some options that would allow them to assist the town somewhat um and uh, i not entirely convinced they would agree to the, assuming all of the taxes but they have expressed a willingness to cooperate with the town and uh, so we are investigating some options in which they could help us through their rental contract to perhaps uh, better manage this but going forward i believe that we now move from the second year to the third year to make sure that we are levying the appropriate interest and fines and moving this to the uh, possibility of an auction thank you Thank you, sir. Uh, Council, any more discussion on this topic before we move on? And seeing none. So we'll be heading to action item 6.4. That's found on page 39 of your agenda. And that's the Hinton RCMP Municipal Detachment Multi-Year Financial Plan. I'll turn this over to administration. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the whole of council, the recommended action is that council accepts the Hinton Municipal Detachment Multi-Year Financial Plan that is dated April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2028 as information and authorize the mayor as signatory on behalf of the town. Um, Bit of background on this, uh, the preparation of such a, such a multi-year financial plan is identified in Article 17.1 of the Municipal Police Service Agreement that is signed between the town and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. 
On April 4th, 2022, senior administration representing the town participated in a virtual financial planning process with the RCMP. That is the Operations Strategy Branch, Alberta RCMP, and all other municipalities within the province with populations at, uh, at or below 15,000 persons. During the session, the attached plan was shared by the branch. Uh, this was not shared by or developed by local detachment staff. This uh, financial plan is uh, currently uh, signed and dated June 7th, 2022 by uh, Acting Detachment Commander Hinton Detachment, Sergeant Graham Gursky. And it confirms uh, the proposed or expected budget for the RCMP operating the town at Hinton commencing April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2028. Uh, the original request was that the plan be signed by the mayor and returned to the detachment by June 15th, 2022. Uh, however, administration felt it was important uh, to investigate this plan further and return for the acceptance of council prior to seeking the mayor's signature on this document. Uh, the uh, town of Hinton correctly is currently contracted by the RCMP with a working member utilization of 19 full-time employees full-time equivalent, that's RCMP members, and three additional rural members. The uh, 19 serving the town of Hinton are funded 70% uh, by the town of Hinton, 30% by the province of Alberta. The three rural members are funded 100% by the province of Alberta. Um, with that, uh, Madam Chair and to uh, members of council, I am, I am available for any questions council may have regarding this matter. Thank you, sir. Council, we do have an action item before us. Any questions, debate? Councillor Taylor. I'm, I'm a little reluctant to uh, approve this at this time because uh, I've, I've asked a bunch of uh, questions um, regarding uh, complaint, uh, under getting a complete understanding of this report, uh, particularly with the uh, financial implications of this and trying to have a uh, some sort of cost containment and financial efficiency in what we're doing. And the town manager indicated that he's gone to the RCMP to try to get some of those answers to those questions. So, uh, I, my preference is to uh, wait till the RCMP can provide that information and preferably uh, talk to the staff sergeant directly about uh, his financial report that he's provided. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So council, we have nothing on, I'm sorry. Councilor Haas. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm prepared to make this motion uh, this evening. And uh, so I'm gonna put that council accepts the Hinton Municipal Detachment multi-year financial plan, April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2028, as information and authorize the mayor as a signatory on behalf of the town. Um, and if I can speak to it. I think this is a bigger picture. I appreciate Councillor Taylor, you know, mentioning, but our, our, I think from what I've called from the conversations and what we've heard from ICO Hamlin, uh, Sergeant Gursky is a middle person. This is a K division conversation, uh, a much bigger conversation to have he had, um, you know, and, and I liked the fact that, you know, there were some improvements in, in the contract. I know that it's, you know, some more money, but um, RCMP are improving their services, their efficiencies, their equipment, their, all of those different things that uh, quite frankly sounded were quite outdated, needed to be upgraded. Um, this is a reality of our, of our communities uh, that it falls on our, on our, on our doorsteps, um, you know, and, uh, you know, as, as it's been stated, our members are no more, no less than what is recommended for our community of this size. Um, and I understand that statistically, this is a type of service, it's hard to analyze stats and, and the effectiveness of it in our communities. There's a, there's a number of different things in, in, in our society that it's hard to 
have stats on things, whether it's working, whether it's not. Um, however, I, I, this is a bigger, broader conversation. You know, we, this is what we have uh, to protect our communities from crime, uh, but also to be proactive as well to pre prevent. So um, I'm, I'm going to be in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haas, very much. Councillor LaBerge. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, well, I, I, I think to just go, well, we need policing, so it doesn't matter whatever it costs, it costs, isn't um, a proper consideration. I don't know, if I look on page 51 of our report, we're looking to spend somewhere between 3.6, between 2 million 3.6 on equipment every year for the next eight years. Uh, uh, and where we said we no more, no less, I mean, if you look at the top of page 40, uh, we actually have seven more RCMP officers in place than, a, than an average community our size. So I took a look on, on the top of page 54, they're saying that the cost per officer is gonna go from 140,000 to 153,000. Just for the seven officers we have over and above the provincial average, that's $984,000 this year, and it's one, well, essentially $1.1 million a year after that. That's only for the seven police officers over and above the 12 that statistically a community our size should have. We're looking at a 9% increase in the cost of policing next year. Um, with that being the case, when we're talking about nine, 10% increases, um, I think it is um, an issue that we need to have a conversation about. And really, do we need 12? Do we need 18? I haven't heard anything um, that would indicate that we need, you know, 18 police officers when a community our size statistically across the province have 12. Um, when it costs a million dollars more to have those police officers in place. Now, we need to have uh, sufficient coverage, but I think we need to have a conversation about what sufficient is. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Councillor Ostashek. Thank you, Madam Chair. I share a lot of the concerns that have already been brought up by Councillors uh, LaBerge and Taylor. Um, I've got lots of unanswered questions about what is an appropriate number of uh, RCMP to have policing in our community. My understanding is exactly the same as Councillor LaBerge is that the number that we have is significantly higher than comparable communities. Now that number might be right or maybe it's not, but I think what's part, part of what's missing from this conversation is a holistic conversation about policing in our community and where community peace officers fit into it. So I, I guess I, I do have a question for administration then, because it seems like there's a lot of un, unanswered questions then, I'd like to know, is there any risk or, or danger in not approving this today and in approving this later down the road or, uh, yeah. Respectfully to council, there, there is no danger, but the reason I use the term respectfully is this is not a negotiation with the RCMP. They have provided the budget as an information item to council. They will bill us quarterly and if we, through our budget processes for 2023, wish to see a reduction in cost to the town of Hinton, it'll come with a discussion in reducing members. They, they will not discuss their proposed budget. They will not compromise on the safety of their members. Um, they will discuss with council. So they, we do have a, a municipal police service agreement signed with the previous council that set these numbers. And if, if council chooses to reduce that, it's, it's within our realm. It is a one-year triggering mechanism and can take up to 24 months to implement a cost savings. But that is Honestly, to, to the best that the director and I have been able to determine, the best way in which we can control costs around, and I hear council's concern regarding the policing costs, but that is the one thing we do control. Um, this quarterly billing is coming from the RCMP, whether the mayor signs this or not. Thank you, sir. Can I follow up, Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, with that said, and that understanding, 
uh, I will support the proposed motion, but I would have another question for administration then. What would administration require from council if council wants to have an in-depth holistic discussion about community policing uh, over the summer, next fall, potentially through through the budget process? Do we, do we need a direction to bring us a report or is it just going to be part of the budget discussions? Thank you, sir. Through, uh, through the, the chair to all of council. Um, that is a terrific question. And uh, I'm not sure that a simple motion would be adequate respectfully to council. I would suggest it, we would probably want to engage the public on policing and what that could entail. Uh, we could have a discussion in and around the budget process. So a motion could uh, initiate that discussion. Uh, I've heard discussions around Comparable, comparable communities, what are other communities, our size spending in policing, I would suggest we would want to take a look at that. I would suggest that administration come with a, I would, with options to council, and then I would recommend to council that we then go out to the community and to the public who may wish to speak to this matter and seek their input before forwarding through the budget process an official request to the RCMP potentially. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Taylor. Well, I agree with what uh, CAO Hamlin said. Um, if I take the RCMP uh, word for what they say in this report, this is our opportunity, one of our opportunities at least to discuss cost containment and strengthen financial efficiency. You know, obviously, we're not going to tell them what kind of gun to buy or what kind of hard body equipment to buy or safety equipment or stuff like that. And this all does lead to the spot where Councillor Labarge said they have given us a report that says that we have anywhere from 50 to 60 percent more RCMP than the average detachment for populations of uh, 10 to 20,000. And that they've given us information in this report that says that. We are going to be spending 18% more on our policing uh, costs over what we approved in our budget recently and upwards of 10% in, in future years. So to just uh, approve this report without even asking the RCMP to come and uh, present us with more information, they have given us a financial report that doesn't have year-by-year -year financial information in it. I don't know how it can be called a financial report. So why would we run our household why would we run um, this part of our business different than we're running other parts of our business? This constitutes 25% of our town's expenditures. With the rest of our town's expenditures, we're going to be uh, discussing those in detail. We're going to be having uh, targets for what we want to spend for those uh, coming up. And uh, we're going to be uh, asking administration to meet those uh, particular targets. Why wouldn't we avail ourselves of this opportunity especially when, as CEO Hamlin has just said, there is uh, no real consequence to not signing this report immediately. Why wouldn't we wait three or four weeks till we can get some more information on this, understand the report a little bit better like we would any other part of our business? I don't understand why anybody would want to uh, proceed and just sign this um, in light of that absence of information. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Hawes. Yeah, and I and I hear all the concerns. I definitely do. And but I what I'm also hearing is is ICO handle, if I understand you correctly, is we could wait three or four weeks, but we may not get what that information again that we're looking for just be, because this is it's not a look at discussion of budget. It's look at they're not gonna, gonna change things. Our control over changing this is what I understand is the number of members we have. So that's what we can do. But this is this conversations on the contract, having the conversation later about the members is where we can have that control over our budget and our cost savings if, if, see, if we see fit. Um, I guess the question that I have in regards to this is um, to ICO Hanlon, when we do our service level, have that conversation later, but will the service level review include the RCMP portion of, of the organization members wise, not just the municipal ones, but the whole organization. Will that include be included in that? 
Madam Chair, through you to all of Council and to uh, Councillor Haas. I, I know I, I believe I alluded to that earlier today in an email to Council. Um, I've not discussed that with our contractor, but certainly to me it speaks to a service level discussion. And so um, I, I would have to dis I would have to confirm. Excuse me, and I know that's an item coming up later on today's agenda. We have a lot of that today. Um, I would have to discuss that with our contractor to see if that is a specialty and if they have the skills to, to conduct that sort. But I think that's the sort of analysis we have to do in conjunction with our 2023 budget. Is it also, if I may, Madam Chair? Certainly. Is it a responsibility of the RCMP to potentially do a service level review of their community if we were to request one that speaks to like, we have a concern of members. Can do they do that if that was something requested by by a municipality? Madam Chair, through you to uh, Councillor Haas to all of Council. Um, that is something we can certainly ask our departing uh, detachment commander. So Graham is is leaving Hinton, but uh, we can have that discussion with him or with the new detachment commander when they come in and see if that's something that can be undertaken either in parallel or as part of our service level review. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. You're good, Councillor Haas. Good. Uh, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I uh, just uh, for something I forgot to mention, I'm sorry for that. Um, I did reread the um, um, Town of Hinton RCMP agreement uh, that we were all given back in December. And there is a extensive section on financial reporting of the RCMP to the Town of Hinton. And it does allow us to um, uh, ask or additional information to understand uh, this stuff um, a little bit better. So we we pay them currently $2.1 million. We've got an agreement signed. We are allowed to ask extra questions to try to understand this so we can sort out our resourcing needs. That's what we pay for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, um, I have myself in queue. I think any time that we're considering reducing the number of police officers we have in our community. That's a big, big discussion and, and one that I look forward to. So, uh, Councillor McGowan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to share some of the same concerns that my fellow councillors have echoed. You know, I, I think when you're dealing with this large of a budget, we have a real serious responsibility to make sure that we're asking the appropriate questions that we're fully informed and I, I agree with Councillor Taylor in that it seems like there's there's no harm if we were to table this uh, until you know councillors' questions and inquiries were you know met. And I think that's an opportunity we could sit down with the acting uh, our acting staff sergeant, or perhaps even take the opportunity to put an invite out uh, to our incoming staff sergeant who is living in our community uh, but just not currently working. Um, those are all good opportunities to engage in some community building uh, and some relationship building, provided, of course, that it doesn't put us at a disadvantage if we're going to wait. All that being said, the one thing that I want to I want to caution counsel against, uh, from my own perception, there's been a lot of discussion around statistics. Well, statistically, we're a town of ten thousand. Statistically, you know, uh, I would remind counsel that less than two years ago. Uh, for the second or third year in a row, uh, Hinton was on, you know, McLean's list of, you know, the top 20 dangerous places in Canada. Um, it's one thing to focus on the number of people in our community. It's another thing to remember that there is a unique context to our community that we do not have with other communities our size. So simply to say we're a, ten of, a town of 10,000 people, well, that's lovely. Yes, we are. But we have a, con a, a context of that community that is unique to us. And you can't simply compare us based on our numbers to what our, our needs are in terms of uh, crime prevention. And that's, it's a very serious thing. And, and when you consider some of the high profile cases that have been in this community over the last couple of years, uh, for myself, I would have caution running out to the, the community and, and potentially saying, well, yeah, we're immediately considering pulling funding. I'm not, I'm not doing that. 
I'm all for asking questions and I'm all for getting the, a full, well-rounded idea of what's going on with the budget that we support. Uh, but I would be very hesitant to say we don't need X amount of RCMP officers. I don't know that. I'm not an expert in this field. I would love to ask our staff sergeant why we need X number of personnel, why we need these certain items, uh, but I don't want to run into that conversation with any assumptions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McGowan. A quick question to administration. This uh, action item, it's going to proceed. It's an information item. Um, requires them, I don't, it requires the mayor's signature. It's going to go ahead. But what I hear council saying is we would like to have a separate conversation with the RCMP. So. Uh, Madam Chair, that is loud and clear for administration. We, we do hear that. We think it's necessary and important moving forward as council considers uh, policing for the for the town of Hinton. So I know we got a motion on the floor, but that's something admin would take care of. Um, or would it need to be a motion of council for that to happen? Madam Chair, through you to all of council, the administration can undertake that, or if council wishes, it could be by motion. I, I think it's a great opportunity with a new detachment commander arriving to uh, build that relationship and bring them here, ask them to attend, excuse me, and have initiate that discussion with them on the policing, the needs, the requirements of a community such as in. Good, thank you, sir, very much. Uh, Councillor Laberge. Uh, and not to belabor this, um, uh, Madam Chair, uh, but um, when you hire somebody for, I don't know, $4 million and you ask them to give you a report, I think they should give you a report. And to say, oh, well, those are the numbers we've got to pay them. Why didn't they just write us uh, an invoice and tell us what they were going to charge us? I mean, if we're not going to ask any questions, we're not going to push back on this report, then we'll take it for what it is and we'll pay whatever it is. Just send the invoice over. Don't go through the through the process of, of putting together a report is, is my thought on it. Like this is our opportunity to go, listen, the information you gave us is not good enough. Just my thoughts. Thank you, sir. Councillor Haas. Yes, Madam Chair. So as much as I, I mean, I'm, I, that we still can have this conversation, but I'm worried about the fact of what it looks like legislatively later if we were to defeat this on this. So I'm prepared to withdraw this motion at this time. I hear the appetite is we'd rather hold off on this and have that conversation and probably look at a motion of the option number two, which would be bringing it back to, to uh, community the whole where it would give administration time then to invite those partners to the table. So if there's no objection, I would like to withdraw my motion Thank you, Councillor Haas. Um, Council, is there any objection from Council to having this removed? None? And I'd like to make, if I may. Yes, sir, go ahead. I'd like to make the motion that the Hinton Municipal Detachment Multi-Year Financial Plan, April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2028, be brought to a future committee of the whole meeting for further discussion. If I can speak to it. Certainly. Uh, I hear what my fellow councillors are talking about, and I too don't want to just hand it over. It, 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 having information, gathering information is always good, asking those questions. Um, you know, I don't see it changing, obviously. I, I, I think that this is, again, a conversation uh, in a broader conversation about members and the size of our detachment. I agree 100% with Councillor Magoon, you know, that just because we're a community of 10,000 and what stats say, it, it doesn't always mean that, but that's the opportunity to have those questions asked of our community partners or, 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 or you know, our, our detachment commander. So um, hopefully this then fulfills the needs for council and then we can move on with this in the future. I don't plan on putting a date on that, uh, Madam Chair, because I'd prefer that uh, uh, leave it with administration uh, to, to then have enough time to, uh, to get, gather who we need to have at the table so thank you thank you sir councillor taylor uh thank you for that councillor Haas. i do appreciate uh your consideration um could i make a suggestion i don't know if you're amenable to please um i everything you said i liked um with maybe have the discussion with the current uh 
staff sergeant. Like I'd like them there to be able to answer the questions at, at a time of their, at when we can, when the administration can reasonably uh, organize that into the future. I mean, we're, we're giving them a lot of money. I think they can show up and talk to us. Thanks. So what, are, Madam Chair? Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if I want to speak to specific people that we have, because I think even if there's an opportunity to have a representative from K Division as a possibility as well. So I don't want to handcuff administration. I, I, I think they're hearing what we're saying here tonight. And, and I look to ICO Hanlon. If you want that, I'll be willing to do that. But I'd rather just leave it kind of open ended for you then to gather those individuals and, and make those invitations. But any comment? I see you handling. Madam Chair, through you to Councillor Haas to all the council. Uh, administration's preference would be a little more flexibility so we can reach out to K Division and to the representatives that may be willing to come out or able to come out and speak to council or to a committee meeting in the future. And uh, I would appreciate that flexibility. If I could, Madam Chair, as well, just before possibly we vote on this motion, we do need to vote on the withdrawing motion from a little earlier for Councillor Haas. So if we could just take care of that housekeeping okay. item. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, good. You know, I was going to do a little recap with Jen on what had all transpired there. So Council, we we did have um, Councillor Haas withdraw his initial motion. All those um, in favor of that? Okay, Council, we do have a um, motion on the floor. Is there any more debate or questions on that? Or shall I call the question? Okay, I will call to question that the Hinton Municipal Detachment Multi-Year Financial Plan, April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2028, be brought to a future committee of the whole meeting for further discussion. All those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Yes, sir. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, just a understanding type question, if you don't mind, um, to um, CEO Hanlon. Um, the town had an ARCMP agreement that we received in December indicates that services to the RCMP can be either decreased or increased within one year of the receipt of a written request. Um, some of the answers you've given me indicate that it's 24 months. Is that, am I, am I not fully understanding the information you gave me? Because that seems to be different than what's in clause 52 of our RCMP contract. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Through uh, Councillor Taylor to all of council, uh, our, our, our director of uh, community protective services in speaking with the RCMP confirms kind of a two-step process. There is under the agreement, the one year in which uh, we can initiate and make a request and uh, the consideration of that request will be managed within a year. It can take up to a subsequent 24 months or two years to actually severance or move, move members or anything to that effect. So they can do it sometimes sooner than that, but it, they, do, they do allow up to two years to actually action a reduction or increase in members. Thank you. Good, good, Councilor Taylor. Thank you. That's good. Okay. Um, any other questions on this topic, Councilor Ostashek? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate that this is going to be coming back, but um, I, I guess I need some clarification on, from administration on what's going to be coming back. Is with this motion, it just reads that this multi-year financial plan will be coming back to a future committee of the whole for further discussion. So is that going to include a report on options for policing in our community and the role that community peace officers play and how they might be 
how they might work in conjunction with the services that RCMP play? Or is this only going to be a discussion about this multi-year financial plan? Sir, through you, through the chair, to all of council. Um, I, I guess I would ask for that clarity in the motion if necessary, because the initial motion I had would, would have us trying to get some more information from K Division. And please understand that this, this budget was not prepared locally. There was nobody locally involved in the preparation of the budget. The, the budget comes out of Ottawa, it comes to K Division, it's distributed across the province. Um, so the initial or the current motion, I would imagine trying to have representatives from K Division have the local uh, detachment commander and speak to the proposal. If it uh, were to be a broader discussion around policing, I think that's a different motion and not one I'm contemplating in this motion. I can follow up then, Mr. Chair, or, sorry, Madam Chair. I would like to make a motion, please. Go ahead, sir. Just wait for Ms. Davy Campbell. I'd like to move the council direct administration. to bring a report uh, detailing options regard, regarding community, community policing in the town of Hinton before the end of September 2022. I don't know if I could speak to it quickly. So I did pick a date. I picked before the end of September 22. So hopefully we can get this report in time that we can use it during budget deliberations in the event that council does want to make some changes to, uh, to the 2023 budget and uh, maybe take a look at some options regarding how policing is done in our community moving forward. Uh, I think it's a bigger conversation than just what's included in this multi-year financial plan. I think that needs to be a holistic conversation, as I've said a couple times, between the role that the RCMP play in our community and the role that community peace officers play in our community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Taylor, did you have your hand up? He did. But... Um... I don't know if my comment fits with this motion. My kind of question is, I have questions that I'd like answered on the original report that I think are relevant to both items we're talking about, the original report and the item that Councillor Ostashkik is talking about. And I would suggest that there's other councillors that might have similar kind of requests. Is it possible that, uh, or do we need a motion that, uh, we send those requests for information to the CAO, he amalgamates them, and where reasonable, he tries to get the answers for us for either one of these two reports coming up. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Taylor, I, um, I really couldn't make out what you were saying. Or Are you speaking to the motion that is on the floor right now? Yeah, I'm saying that um, I, I'm, I'm saying that uh, in order for that motion to be successful, and that for the um, the motion that we just passed to be successful, that um, I I have questions on um, information that I need to understand for either motion. I guess the questions I've already asked. Am I going to get the answers to those or? Okay, um, so to me, what you're saying right now, your questions are pertaining to what we have just dealt with and not the motion that's on the floor right now. So um, I'd like to come back to what you're talking about, but deal with the motion right now. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Um, Councillor Ostashek. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. So my assumption, and I, I probably should have clarified this with administration before I assumed, was that the uh, multi-year financial plan would be coming back to council uh, significantly in advance of the uh, report that I've proposed in this motion. Uh, that would be preferable because I think the conversation around the multi-year financial plan and maybe getting some of Councillor Taylor's questions and some of the other uh, council's questions answered, you know, either at or in advance of that multi-year financial plan discussion will help to inform the, the uh, conversation that we're going to have about uh, policing in the community if this proposed motion goes ahead. I think the two kind of go hand in hand, but the multi-year financial plan discussion kind of has to happen first. Thanks. Oh, sorry, Madam Chair, I guess to administration then, am I assuming correctly that that would come prior to uh, to this one that's proposed in the motion? Sir, through you to all of council, yes. I would. I had envisioned both one building on the other and uh, the intent being to try and have representatives of the RCMP speak to those questions that have been raised by council members over the past uh, week or so and uh, where available, return that information back to council and hopefully with an opportunity to uh, meet with the new detachment commander, specifically on the five-year financial plan. The subsequent motion is a, is a larger, more strategic discussion around policing for the town of Hinton going forward. Thank you, sir. Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll be speaking in favor of the motion on the floor. Um, I think it's it's a good opportunity with if we do pass the another motion this evening with the service plan, the combination of doing the service level review, having a look at then what are options for policing, because that I think is also essential to have that report, have that information, um, and uh, and then having that further information or going forward as to what is policing look like in our community. So um, I'll be in favor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So council, we do have a motion on the floor. Is there any further question debate on this? If not, I would like to call the question. And Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I can't see it. So can you just read it off one more time for me, please? I'm sorry, say that again. Can you read it one more time for me what oh, the motion we're voting on, please? Yes, Thank sir. You. Yes, sir. That council direct administration to bring a report detailing options regarding community policing in the town of Hinton before the end of September, 2022. All those in favor? And that is carried. Council, anything more on this topic? We're good. Thank you, administration. So our next action item is action item 6.5. That's found on page 56 of your um, agenda. It's the unbudgeted funding request 2022 service level review presented by administration. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to all of council. At the 2022 strategic planning session, the uh, possible need for a comprehensive service level review was considered by town council and the interim CAO as a potentially valuable tool in conjunction with the preparation of the 2023 operating budget. Uh, subsequently, and during the June 22nd Council and Senior Administration Strategic Session and Administration's Tactical Planning Session on June 23rd, the importance of completing a service level review prior to and hopefully in conjunction with the 2023 budget plan was reaffirmed by all parties. Um, as Council is aware, the uh, consultant for this year's Council Strategic Planning Session, that is Transitional Solutions Incorporated, has experience conducting municipal service level reviews and has submitted the attached proposal for the review and consideration of the town with a cost estimate of $73,431. This excludes GST and travel disbursements. As the town did not include a 2022 budget amount for completion of a review, administration sought potential funding opportunities within the approved year's budget. In the 2020 
in 2020, excuse me, the town initiated the COVID-19 resiliency, resiliency support program fund through the transfer of emergency reserves and the provincial most or municipal operating sustainability transfer. This option has adequate funds remaining this year to pay for the service level review in an amount not to exceed $75,000. Uh, this should this fund should be expended and or returned to general revenues as the COVID-19 pandemic is deemed over and moved on to a continuing endemic health situation. Um, with that, two, two alternatives presented by administration that council approves funding the 2022 service level review in an amount not to exceed $75,000, excluding GST from the COVID-19 Resiliency Support Program Fund, or the second option that council postpones the service level review and direct administration to prepare a budget initiative through the 2023 budget process for council's consideration. Uh, the uh, proposal is attached, it's dated June 27th, 2022, and uh, administration is available to answer any questions of council at this time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Council, we do have a um, action item before us. Is there questions or debate? Councillor Taylor. Um, does this service level review include all services that the town pays for, including the RCMP? Madam Chair, through you to Councillor Taylor. Um, I have not had a chance to discuss the RCMP component with the consultant, uh, but my understanding is it's a comprehensive service level review. I will have to follow up with them regarding the RCMP portion. It, that seems kind of important in light of what we just talked about, um, frankly. So should we really be voting on this now? If we don't know that, just a question to the rest of council, I guess. Yeah. So, Councillor um, Councillor Laberge, uh, I'm good for now, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, because the question was asked, I'm prepared to go forward with this because I mean we've got lot more services and we need to get going on this if we don't get going on this we're not going to have it for 2023 which is i think extremely important so um we get them going on this if if they can't do that part of the rcmp one and if we want that done on the rcmp then we have that as a as a alternative uh, alternative conversation but currently right now with what it's on there i'm prepared to move forward that's my my thoughts on that thank you councillor haas councillor magoon Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, just to respond to Councillor Taylor's question. Yeah, I would agree with Councillor Hawes. I think this is one of those things that's a cornerstone of our, our, our strategic plan. It certainly shapes uh, the budget that's coming up faster than, than I think anybody realizes. And I'd like to see it get moving as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Laberge. I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chair. Go ahead, sir. Uh, the council approved the funding of the 2022 service level review in the amount not to exceed $75,000 from the COVID-19 Resiliency Support Program Fund. And if I could just speak to that, please. Um, in, the, in the background on there, it, it talks about the possible need for comprehensive service review as a, and it, it talks about the review as being potentially valuable tool. I don't, I don't think there's any possible or potentially about it. I mean, this is something um, we're constantly faced with that we're, we're told that it's going to impact service levels and nobody even knows what that means. Nobody up here anyhow. And uh, I think it's critical. Uh, and um, that's why, uh, you know, the money I think needs to be found uh, so that we can, we can have an effective discussion, not only what we're spending, but what we're doing with what we're spending. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Councillor Haas. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Labars, for bringing the motion forward. I'll be in absolute uh, agreement to this. 
Um, it's something that I'm excited to see. Uh, it's been something that personally I've wanted for quite a while, but we just haven't had the ability. But now with this money there and uh, the fact of using it, I do have one quick question though for administration though, um, and maybe I, I misread it, but you indicated, I thought in the report that it was the 73,000 and then there was travel and, and stuff like that involved in it. Um, and this has got that it won't exceed 75,000. Does administration, can they comment on that? Should it be more than that to accommodate the travel or is that, uh, did I misread that? Madam Chair, through you to all of council, to uh, Councillor Haas, um, he did not misread that. Um, I, I did want to be clear, their proposal did indicate excluding GST and travel disbursements. Um, I, I did want to put an upset on this. And if, uh, if it was necessary, uh, there's other budgets we can cover some travel per diem of the consultant. I but I wanted to control the costs on the, the larger item, which of course is the review. Okay, and Madam Chair, that's that's fine. I just wanted to make sure we had enough in the in the kitty for it. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So um, to interim CEO, we have a motion on the floor that that um, speaks to the funding. So, but it does not speak to the provider who would provide this service. So would that be a separate motion of council to. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay, but we're looking at funding. If I could, through you to all of council, um, the the award of this is operational. It is within the purchasing policy for me to sole source, and uh, what we did not have was a funding source, and so uh, administratively, of course, I could not do anything within the budget year. So council has the, the has the ability in the in approving this motion to provide the funding. I can then deal directly with and can award the contract and that's within my power. Okay, good. That's that was my question. Thank you. So council, we do have a uh, mo and Councillor Taylor. Go ahead, sir. Um just a uh... A quick question uh, to my fellow councillors, if you don't mind, please. When I read the proposal, which I assume is the way, way we're going to go, it indicates that this council report, um, the early presentation of the draft results would be for uh, senior administration only, and then later it would come to council. Is that the preference of this council? Because do you want the service level to be ours? or in which case we would at least be part of that early presentation of the draft results so we could have some say in guiding this. Because if it goes to senior management and then administration and then they do their thing and then it comes to us, I just, I prefer these kind of service level reviews if their um, council, if, if council has a major say in what's going on, that's just my preference, but thank you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Did you have a question in there for admin? Well, it's really to my councillors, I guess. Um, so if they don't want to comment, that's fine. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor McGowan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in short, yeah, I agree with Councillor Taylor. I think this is a pretty important process. Uh, and I'd like to have a handle on the evolution of that information as it starts to come in from uh, from the potential contractors. Uh, you know, it's it's important. And it's I think more importantly, uh, you know, the community should know from from the get go transparently what information is being received from uh, from from the contractor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGowan. And I have to say, I agree with um Councillor McGowan, Councillor Taylor, um, Council as a whole has been um, asking for this service review for a very long time, and I, it's really important to us to be, to uh, you know, play a big part when the information starts rolling in. So, Council, and we have Mr. Councillor Taylor. Well, that being the case, and that there might be some support for that. 
would I have to, after this motion, make a separate motion or could administration just bear that in mind with the contract that we have? Um, just a question. Thank you, sir. Jail. Madam Chair, through you to Councillor Taylor, to all the council, I would request that council allow administration to work with the consultant to uh, express the wishes of council on this matter, the timing of engagement with the council. I read the key stakeholder comment and I apologize, I was trying to kind of track that back, but certainly council is a key stakeholder in this document. So I would expect your early involvement in it and I will confirm that with the consultant. Councillor Taylor, does that satisfy your question? Okay, good. So is there anybody else in queue before I call the question? Everybody's good? Okay. Um, that council approve funding of the 2022 service level review in the amount not to exceed 75,000, excluding GSD, from the COVID-19 resiliency support program fund. All those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. And we are done with our um, action items now. So we go into our um, information items. And I know I'm saying that as if I'm asking people for a little bit of a, um, help here. Yes. So we go into our first proclamation. Madam Chair, we're on page 84 of the agenda package. It is the National Drowning Prevention Week proclamation. And I would read the whole thing, eh? Yes, you That's, would. Okay, good. All righty. So, um, it is National Drowning Prevention Week, um, whereas the mission of the Life Saving Society of Canada, Alberta and the Northwest Territories branch is to prevent drowning and water related injuries throughout our country. And whereas most drownings are preventable and through promoting water smart education and a healthy respect for the potential dangers that any body of water may present, can we truly enjoy recreational opportunities and whereas the Life Saving Society urges Canadians and Albertans to actively supervise children who are in and around the water, to refrain from impairment while participating in aquatic activities, to never swim alone, to stay vigilant around water and adhere to signage, and to always wear a life jacket while boating and when needed, and whereas the Life Saving Society of Canada has declared July 17th to 23rd, 2022, National Drowning Prevention Week to focus on the problem that is drowning and the hundreds of lives that could have been saved this year. Therefore, be it resolved that I, stepping in as Deputy Mayor Joanne Race, do hereby proclaim July 17th to 23rd, 2022, National Drowning Prevention Week in the town of Hinton in the province of Alberta and do commend its thoughtful recognition to all citizens of our community. There. And we're moving on to our um, section eight, which would be reporting. And I will start um, council reports to my left, and that would be Councillor Stashik. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I had the opportunity to represent Council at the Canada Day festivities this past weekend. I got to walk in the parade and hand out some uh, wildflower seed packets, which were uh, a big hit, actually, with the parade goers. They were Quite appreciative of of uh, that instead of you know the the generic run of the mill candy. So I, I thought that was a pretty pretty cool thing to hand out to. Other than that, I have nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor McGowan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just simply tomorrow, I have an RCMP committee meeting, uh, and other than that, nothing to report. 
Thank you, sir. Councillor Hawes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just my apologies that I've been under the weather for the past week, so I wasn't able to attend the Canada Day, but I heard great things about it. And thank you to Councillor Stashik and Councillor Race for being there. And uh, other than that, I have nothing to report, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Councillor Taylor. Uh, the only thing is that I heard that we had a tremendous public participation at the Canada Day uh, Parade, and I think uh, it's a tribute to uh, Don Ingerdahl and his organization and the administrative staff that participated. And thank you very much for the excellent work. The results certainly looked uh, fantastic from what I heard, although I was unable to go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor LaBerge. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I guess uh, the only thing I have to report is um, like the rest of council, and this is just uh, so people have a heads up that uh, we have continued uh, conducting interviews for our CAO, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, sticking somebody in a big chair permanently. Thank you. Nothing further to report. Thank you, sir. And for me, um, I did attend Canada Day. It was a, um, a pleasure to help our um, Councillor Hawes out. I also want to thank um, Don Engerdahl. He just did a fabulous job uh, thanking Don, but also the town of Hinton for everything that they did that day. It was really good. And that's all I have to report. Um, our CAO, your I'm report, sir. Before I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, before we move on. Yes. Sorry, just I just wanted to throw one more kudos out there regarding the Canada Day festivities, and that's to the Hinton District Chamber of Commerce who organizes the the uh, parade, and they did do a wonderful job of organizing the parade. In addition to all the work that the town did uh, to make a, a, a memorable event this year, considering that the uh, Foon Festival for the first time in a long time hasn't been a part of it. So, thanks. Okay, thank you very much for adding that. And CAO. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to all of Council. Um, just a reminder of the land acknowledgement uh, committee meeting uh, this Thursday evening. And uh, my thanks to Council participation and to the good work from Heather Mark. I will be attending the, sorry, I'm just bringing it up here, the 76th annual general meeting of the Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway Association on Friday, which the uh, obviously the town of Hinton is a member in. And um, we are uh, starting our uh, process around the union negotiations. That meeting will be tomorrow. We'll have a kickoff meeting for that. We have secured a contractor consultant, uh, quite happy with that individual's, uh, with that individual coming on board. Um, Sorry, just taking a quick look. I think that's kind of it for the next week for me. Um, from a status report update, and uh, certainly it, council is aware, um, we did not have the uh, audited financial statements on today's agenda. My uh, my apologies and, and my regret to, uh, to council. Um, we have received them. And so we are in the process now of reviewing them and uh, have scheduled a special meeting of council for next Tuesday, at which time we'll be bringing forward those audited statements and the auditor will be in attendance and, and able to speak to those. So my thank you, my thanks uh, to you uh, all for your patience. Um, we do continue and uh, the elephant perhaps in the room is that the, we do continue to struggle at, at the swimming pool at this time. And uh, so uh, I, I can't share too much here tonight. I do help. I, I do hope to be able to share something with council and publicly later in the day tomorrow as to just exactly we are struggling with a number of issues that have emerged in the last couple of days and over the weekend and just confirming uh, solutions and, and a plan going forward. So my, my thanks to, to residents that have been very patient and uh, I hope to have more information for everyone here uh, before the end of the week and hopefully uh, tomorrow afternoon be able to release something. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The uh, next item on our agenda is number nine, and that's correspondence. Uh, any discussion on the council information packages that we received? And may I have a motion from council to accept uh, these information packages? Councillor Haas. 
I'll make the motion that we accept council information packages for June 2022. Thank you, sir. We have a motion on the floor. Um, all those in favor? And thank you. So, Council, any notice of motions to be presented? None. And now we're going to move into um, closed session. So could I have a motion to move into a closed session or should I call for a break before that? I, I think I, yeah, well, here, we'll, we'll go into closed session. Madam Chair, I would suggest go into closed session and then uh, we will uh, come back okay. once, uh, once those two items have been addressed. Okay. Okay, so our motion from um, Councilor LaBarish to go into closed session. All those in favor? Thank you. Can we just stay here and we'll get reconnected? Thank you, everyone. We are back in session at 7.04 p.m. Council. Um, Councilor Ostashek. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to make a motion, please. I'd like to move that Council direct Deputy Mayor Haas to proceed as discussed in closed session. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Council, we have a motion on the floor. Any discussion or debate on this? I will um, call the question that Council Direct Deputy Mayor Hawes to proceed as discussed in closed session. All those in favor? And it is carried. Thank you, Council. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? And Councillor LaBarge. I move that we adjourn. Thank you, sir. Okay. Oh, good night. A regular meeting and when when Mr.